Hello, Dan Hooper here from Los Angeles Violin Shop with another tip on keeping your instruments happy, healthy, and in top playing condition. Today, I'm going to show you how to safely clean your instrument. And though I'm demonstrating on a violin, the same methods would apply to violas, cellos, and basses. As you know, it is not unusual to see violins, violas, and cellos, and basses that are a hundred or more years old. As often as not, these instruments will be healthy and happy long after their owners are not. So we, as players, have to look at ourselves as custodians of these instruments. We don't really own them. They're merely passing through our hands on their own lives, and others will play them after us. And so it's our job to take care of them while they're in our possession. And one of the easiest and surest ways to keep these instruments healthy and happy is, and to give them a long life is to keep them clean. And of course, keeping your instrument clean not only keeps it looking good, but it's more important than that. One of the first things people notice when they look at a violin or a viola or a cello is they notice the varnish. They notice the color, they notice the way it enhances the beauty of the woods, and as players we know that it also has a lot to do with the sound quality of our instruments. But really it's there to protect the wood from deterioration and dirt and various other things. And we don't want to do anything to our instruments that's going to compromise or damage the varnish, particularly getting it dirty and dusty and letting rosin dust build up on it are really, really detrimental to the finish of our instruments. Not only the beauty of it, but also it's a build, the varnish's ability to protect our instruments. If you leave dirty, sticky fingerprints on it or let the rosin dust build up on it, at best you're going to have to have the instrument professionally cleaned. Or, if it's so far gone, and this is a habit that's gone on for a long time, you're going to have to have the instrument stripped and re-varnished. Either way you go with that, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. So, I want to talk to you about four habits that will help keep your instrument clean and in good playing condition and protect the varnish and keep it as beautiful as it's intended to be. There are four habits that you should cultivate that will help preserve your instrument and keep it clean. The first one, the best and safest way to keep your instrument clean is to wash your hands before you handle your instrument. Your skin naturally produces oils. We live in environments where there's a lot of dirt and grime in the air and on touching cars or various things. And if we don't wash our hands before we handle our instruments, we're just transferring all the things that we come into contact with onto our instruments. So it's a simple thing to do and if you get in the habit of washing your hands every time before you play, you'll save a lot of bother cleaning on your instrument. The second habit that we should cultivate in taking care of our instrument is to keep it in its case. It's a beautiful thing and a lot of people like to show them off and have them out, especially things like cellos and basses because they're big. But a simple way to keep your instrument clean and protect it from the daily knockabouts that can happen is to keep it in its case. It keeps dust off the instrument and out of the instrument. A lot of times dust can find its way inside the instrument and if that's the case you might have to take it to a luther to have that professionally removed. So second important habit, keep your instrument in its case when it's not being used. The third habit that we should cultivate in keeping our instruments clean and the varnish protected is one that the players of old instruments cultivate, and that's to not touch the varnish unnecessarily. You'll notice anybody who plays an old instrument handles it by the unvarnished portion of the neck and maybe the button or a point on the side that would go unnoticed when they put it up under their chin. That way, skin oils and any sort of dirt or grime that might be on your hands does not get on the instrument and it help, will help our new instruments have as long a life as some of those that have irreplaceable varnishes like instruments that are over a hundred years old. 
And the fourth habit that we should all develop in keeping our instruments clean is a two-part one. One is to always keep a cleaning cloth in your case and to dust your instrument every time you play it. That way rosin dust doesn't build up on it. You'll take it off of the strings and that flakes of rosin dust won't fall onto your instrument and fuse with the finish. So dusting the instrument off every time you play it is the fourth and final habit that we want to get involved in. Now, you want to keep two cleaning cloths in your case, one for the strings and one for the wood of your instrument. So those are some great habits, but my violin is dusty right now. I've just played. I've just been practicing with my orchestra or in my practice room, and I need to keep it clean. So what do I do? Well, as soon as I'm done playing, as I'm packing up, I loosen my bow, and I take one of my microfiber cloths that I keep in my case. I keep a red or a blue one and a white one. The blue one is for the wood. The white one is for the strings. And I wipe off the stick of my bow, getting all the rosin dust off of that. And I wipe off the grip and the frog and the stick down here at the bottom to get any skin oils or perspiration that might have transferred onto the stick while I'm playing. Then once that's done, I put that into its case and I take up my violin and I take my other cleaning cloth, my white one, which I use for the strings, and I brush off any gobbing of rosin dust that is built up on the strings during the practice session, wipe off the rest of the strings with another part of the cloth, make sure to shake the cloth out periodically, and then I take my blue microfiber cloth that I've just shaken out the dust and then I wipe off the instrument in general making sure to get right up underneath the strings where a lot of the rosin dust builds up wiping it all off places where you've touched the instrument because once again it's skin oils and perspiration that can also damage the finish I also like to fold my cloth in half and slip it up under the fingerboard maybe about once a week or so just to dust up under there. Also underneath the tailpiece and the chin rest there's a lot of dust that can build up there. You know, Give your fingerboard a good wiping as well because of course any place your fingers have been anything your fingers have been into and just give it a good overall wiping and that should do it. That'll take care of any sort of dust buildup and keep your instrument as clean as it possibly can be. We here at Los Angeles Violin Shop really like our microfiber cloths. They're great, they clean up well, they do a great job, they're lint-free, and they're inexpensive. But when you're wiping the rosin off of the strings of your instrument, sometimes they can make a really annoying squeaking sound. And some people, it doesn't bother. Others, it bothers quite a bit. And another trick to cleaning your strings, to cleaning the rosin off your strings, is to get a wine cork, the old-fashioned cork that goes into a wine bottle. And you just use that to scrape along the strings, and it will take the rosin right off of them, won't damage the strings at all, and it doesn't make that annoying squeaking sound that microfiber claws sometimes can. I've read that some people recommend using a little bit of alcohol to clean the rosin from their strings. But here at Los Angeles Violin Shop, we really do not think you should use alcohol anywhere near your instrument. Alcohol is a, a solvent and it's used to dissolve varnish, like if it's what the Luthers use to clean their tools, their varnishing tools. And if it will clean and break down the varnish off a brush, it certainly will break down the varnish on your instrument. So even the tiniest droplets of varnish, of alcohol on your varnish, can wreak havoc on your instrument. So please do not use alcohol on your instrument. If you find that you do need to use some sort of solvent in order to clean your instrument, 
we recommend one of two. One is Pets Rosin Remover, which we sell here in the shop, and it's excellent. You don't want to use a lot of it, and you put it on the cleaning cloth, and then use the cleaning cloth on your strings. The other for general body cleaning of your instrument is a product called Simple Green. Either one of those two products applied to the cleaning cloth and wiped on the instrument is the safest way to remove grime, rosin buildup, and other sorts of dirt that might be on your instrument. But always, always, always apply the solvent to your cloth and then take that to the instrument and never keep the cloths that you use with your solvents in the case with your instrument because just the vapors from that cloth can actually destroy the finish of your instrument. Now while we're on the topic of cleaning agents and solvents, it's generally best to avoid putting anything like that on your instrument's finish. It's just better to dust the instrument and avoid any sort of dirt buildup by, by being careful with the instrument. But as I say, if you have to use some sort of cleaning agent, use something that is approved by your local Luther or here at the Los Angeles Violin Shop, we recommend the Rosin Remover by Pets or the Simple Green product. It has no bad chemicals in it that will destroy the surf, uh, this finish on your instrument. Never use alcohol never use commercially available furniture polishes. Many of those polishes contain cleaning agents that include alcohol or other things that might destroy the finish on your instrument. You never ever want to use water on your instrument. As benign as that may seem, Luther's and the, the use water to actually dissolve some of the varnish as well. And when they want to give sort of a matte finish to the instrument, that when the varnish is still a little soft, they'll apply a little water and it can cloud the, the finish. So you don't want to use water, you don't want to use any commercially available furniture polishes, no matter how good for the wood it might be. As I say, we recommend a little bit of dissolved simple green on a cloth or pets rosin remover if for rosin buildup. But if your instrument is particularly dirty or very old and dirty, bring it to your local violin shop and let them clean it because they have products on hand that are safe, that they've been tested on violin, viola, cello, bass varnishes to keep that clean. And that's the best thing to do for your instrument on that note with regards to cleaning agents. Occasionally, you might want to bring back the luster to the finish of your instrument bring back some of that shine that it once had, or if it's an older instrument, you might want to try to restore some of the shine that it may have had in the past. In the case of an older instrument or an instrument that you're not sure of, once again, I'm going to recommend that you bring it to your local violin shop and let them have a look at it to see what condition the varnish is in. They can do a little test to see if there any of the polishes or cleaning agents will dissolve the varnish. If, you, if your instrument is relatively new or is in re good shape and you're pretty sure about it, usually your violin shop will have a violin polish that you can use that has waxes and other things that are actually good for the instrument's finish. They've been designed by Luthers and the folks who create the varnishes, so they're not going to have a detrimental effect. You don't need to use them very often, maybe once a year or once every six months to keep the finish looking nice. Um, but as I say, a good dusting, keeping your hands clean, and avoiding alcohol and solvents will keep your instrument looking as fine as it possibly can. And there you have it. Your instrument is now clean and looking good, so it's time to practice. So have fun. Thanks for watching. My name is Dan Hooper for the Los Angeles Violin Shop, wishing you happy playing. And you can subscribe to the Los Angeles Violin Shop YouTube channel for more tips on keeping your instruments healthy, happy, and performing their best. Thank you very much.